you tuned into VHS Bootleggers Pedro back again with another off the cuff review. Today we are talking about 2022's Everything Everywhere All at Once, and it was one of very few films I had any interest in seeing at the cinema, so we popped along, and here is my initial off the cuff review of this particular motion picture. Produced by the Russo brothers, and so they're um, completely within the Marvel Universe, Captain America, superhero franchises, and I believe that they have a lot of power and um, a lot of presence within that particular genre. This one's directed by Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinbert. Now, I believe those two guys are heavily into uh, producing pop promos, music videos, that kind of thing. And, and yeah, we can sort of see that influence in this, definitely. Um, so, yeah, I've, it's a mixed bag, this one, let me just say, off the bat. And I'll be going all over the place, touching on all the themes uh, that I can remember and the performances and visual effects, etc. as we go along. So, I've got to say, off the bat, um, some of the positives, Michelle Yeoh's performances exceptional really uh, she's an incredibly graceful martial arts performer and that comes from her uh, ballet um peaking opera sort of background i guess and i know she has studied the martial arts in subsequent years but that wasn't her initial background she can play a, a wide range of emotions incredibly at times touching and at times also menacing um, but she has a visual presence that uh, not that many actors and actresses can actually command on the, the screen um, she's believable so yeah um, to, to convey this set of emotions and range it's not easy to do so props to Michelle Yeoh there for really pulling it out of the bag and becoming a, and becoming a very realistic mother uh, kind of figure. So I think there's some great positives there. It's also nice to see uh, Keishu Kwan back on screen. We all remember him from the Goonies. He's taken a back seat in um, well, the past 30 odd years, I guess, uh, being an action stunt choreographer and set designer and, and, and whatever else backstage, I believe. Um, so he's a really good actor and he plays the father role convincingly here. Um, he's like a happy-go-lucky kind of character, really, I, I guess. And y you do see that th throughout this film. And um, I, I wouldn't say there's anything in there that, that makes him appear to be sort of a weak or, or pathetic man. Really, it's just he's uh, just a normal everyday guy, but again, he does this, the martial arts scenes are really well executed as well and choreographed. Um, I'm not sure if he had a hand in that at all, but it'd be interesting to know if he did. So, yeah, directing wise, these guys have got a visual flair, visual style, um, not on that, not especially unique in this day and age. I mean, it what it's what once would have been considered MTV style rapid fire machine gun editing you know something going on every few seconds now that was quite difficult to achieve in the 90s and I'm thinking of uh, Jan Svankmir's Faust and you know that that cuts from different scenes uh, you know like a completely snowy mountainous um, short clip onto something else you know like in the desert and to be able to achieve that back in the, in the early 90s without the aid of um, a massive budget in visual effects, that was not easy. That was a serious accomplishment. But in here, of course, it's uh, greenscreen.com with absolutely tons of um, CGI. Uh, it's well implemented, don't get me wrong, but uh, you kind of still know you're in this CGI universe. And of course... Going into the story a little bit here, it, that's what it's all about. It's about uh, th these characters, uh, a immigrant Chinese family who moved to the States to for a better life, and they um, open up an a laundry mat service, and that's it. They kind of get in the humdrum of existence. They have a daughter. Uh, <laughs> they're always trying to fiddle the taxes, 
Um, yeah, I quite liked that bit of the story, the first half, if you like, um, or at least the first third of the picture. Uh, yeah, that was that was all right. Um, uh, so I will say that this jumps about in places all over the shop. So it's part science fiction. If you had to put it into a genre, I guess it would be science fiction. Part action, a part adventure, and um, part uh, drama, I guess you'd say. And uh, I've, I've got to, before I forget now, some of the sort of negatives here. I mean, I, th I think it's overly sentimental in places, perhaps a little bit mawkish, um, especially the third act. It's like, oh, God beating you over the head with be kind be nice to everyone that's the overall sentiment of this piece and fine it's okay it's just a little bit just saccharine quite frankly and I, I, I use that word quite a bit really it just feels just sickly to me uh, maybe that's because I'm a bit a bit of an old cynic really sure but <coughs> yeah I just uh, maybe they could have gone elsewhere with with that. It's um, a little bit relentless, I guess. Um, not that I'm completely against having a, a positive, uplifting narrative. It's just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the other, the other sort of elements in there are, are this meta universe, and I know that's really big in contemporary films. I'm thinking of like Spider-Man universe and all this kind of Marvel stuff. And you can see the massive influence there from the, the Russo's. Yeah, that's trendy and hip and cool. Let's do this. All right. Again, is that particularly original now? To me, no. Um, although I haven't seen that much of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it doesn't overly interest me, if I'm, in, if I'm honest with you. You know, I prefer... Other things, quite frankly, quite a lot of other things. It's kind of low down on the list of what I'd gravitate towards. Um, so anyway, so yeah, I, I'll go go to the theatre to see this because yes, it's got some martial arts in there, well, well um, executed. Michelle Yeoh does some great uh, stunts, um, and but again, I can't help but think that this is really played out in a CGI fashion as well. And another thing that slightly irritates me about this, it's all incredibly postmodern. And, and um, oh, look, we took fingers for uh, sausages, sausages for fingers even. Oh, it's all a bit, oh, it's all a bit twee and uh, just a bit naff, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, let's get all these crazy ideas. Uh, you can imagine the, the script writing process for this. Let's get all these funky purple haired people in with nose earrings and God knows what. And uh, Let's think of all the funky shit that they can come up with and let's stick it in the movie, man, because we're really hip and trendy. I, it just stinks of this millennial attitude to everything. <laughs> hey, self-referential. Just fuck off. That pissed me off to be honest with you it's just all a bit here we go again oh there's a bagel but really it's a black hole and it, it but uh, but i don't get it oh gen xer you don't understand man you're not down with the kids perhaps cool i'm not <laughs> i'm far too old and cynical perhaps bitter and twisted to for, to really sort of enjoy this film but i didn't think it was totally wank let me just tell you it did have some redeeming features um is there any political posturing? Of course there is. This is Hollywood in 2022. So, you know, it's uh, served up a healthy dose of LGBTQIA plus agenda, you know, in, in, in not once, twice, as it happens. Um, pff, all right. It, 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 <laughs> it's just the norm now, isn't it? So to be expected, I guess, if you're going to go and see a Hollywood film. But, uh, you know, again, there are redeeming features in here. What I will to, would say is I didn't think the score was a particularly memorable. Um, and, I, you know, sound design-wise, it could have perhaps done done more with that. You know, sitting in the theatre, I didn't hear anything particularly epic that really stood out. So, look, it's it's certainly not by the numbers or paint-by-the-numbers style of editing and, and, and visual um camera skills and cgi it, it does have a, a certain quality to it but it's uh 
it, as I say, it's not massively unique either. So I do think these people who are sort of giving it, oh, it's a masterpiece. No, it, it isn't. It's good and it's decent and it's very watchable, but it is a little bit irritating and massively sort of... Um, the attention, your attention span is there's there's no real opportunity here to get involved in a deeper story even though it tries to be deep because it doesn't give you the time although the characterized characterizations aren't terrible either so it, it, it's just a mixed bag to be honest with you and these are my mixed feelings about it it's it's okay it's uh not as good as i thought it would be perhaps that's my fault as well i listened to a couple of reviews before going to watch it and they're never really on point with what i think anyway very 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 rarely um <laughs> so perhaps I, I shouldn't have done that but it certainly wasn't awful and if you want to go and see a, um, a film at the pictures go and see this one I'm sure it's probably the best out there at the minute. So that'll do for my review. Um, thanks very much for watching. And take it easy. I'll be back again shortly.